Okay, uh, let's get sorry. And thanks for joining today, even the Friday afternoon. <laughs> so Friday afternoon, uh, it's uh, pretty much better to hang around the city rather than sitting in the chair and then like a boring watching technical stuff. Yeah, yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, so I'm going to make it very short, the 35 minutes day, and then hopefully you already enjoyed the KubeCon China. But this is my first time in uh, KubeCon in APAC. So, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Java, me, smarter for AI. So how many people have like a one chance to use Java before? OK. OK, not bad, a few. OK. So my name is Daniel. I'm from Red Hat as a developer advocate for like nine years. And I'm also CNCF ambassador for many years and Java champion, and among others. And recently, my colleague, I mean, my friend from Not Red Hat, uh, we are creating a new working group at CNCF uh, Tech, Technical uh, Application Delivery, uh, for bring more application developer into CNCF project. Because when you go to CNCF, there are more than 1,000 projects, which is a pretty much a platform stuff, not application side. So that's why we really be struggle to bring more application developer into a CNCF landscape. So that's why we created this one. So I've been actually, I've been doing like some track chair. I'm actually track chair uh, this C uh, KubeCon China. Uh, review most people's uh, proposal. So which is a really awesome experience. So I've been doing uh, five and six years for that. So here's my contact information after this. Uh, session. If you are interested in any, any question, please find me and reach out to me, Daniel030, because there are many Daniel around the world. Uh, like a Twitter, YouTube channel, and GitHub repo, anything you want, you can just uh, uh, go into and find my me. Uh, basically, I'm from Boston, United States, so it's a, been a long fry get here. But this is my like, um, five times, six times. But, but last time when I visited Hong Kong, it was almost nine years ago. But I feel you know, a lot of change, but much better. So I feel I, uh, I, I think a lot of people actually heard about the AI. But one interesting stuff, when I arrived in Hong Kong from Singapore, I just uh, opened my uh, Gen AI application, which is Google Gemini, and uh, opened a ChatGPT application. And it show uh, we don't service in this country, <laughs> which is just so surprised. <laughs> so, and I heard some of the government regulation to buy like an NVIDIA GPU process as well. So maybe this LLM, AI, Gen AI stuff, match, maybe not super interesting for your daily job, but in the end, inevitably, you have to use Gen AI. So for example, when you send email by Google, and then behind the scene, like a Gemini actually try to rewrite or write your email content automatically with some suggestion based on your previous email content. Or uh, if you try to pop up like a YouTube channel or an online shopping mall on iPhone, and actually Siri try to like a, like a manipulate your shopping list. I mean, it's behind the AI stuff. So a lot of AI terminology came out for the last couple of years, but the AI actually came out and unleashed upon the world almost 100 years ago, back in like 1950. But at a time, AI was not super smart, just like you here. So it was very stupid at a time. And then try to keep making better AI with this huge data set and then more processing and uh, training stuff, that's a new like a technology came out, like a machine learning, deep learning, and so on. And we now arrive at Genai, which is we so exciting about that. The Genai typically create new content, text, image, video, and even source code for you. So whenever you have new AI capability for fun or your business stuff, you want to create something new Content that should be Gen AI. So how Gen AI works? You can go sorry about that. You, you cannot use Google Gemini here, 
But if you watch some video or YouTube channel, and then you see a, a lot of like Apple Siri or Google Gemini or uh, OpenAI ChatGPT, there are many creative content uh, generation for you. But behind the scene, there are large language model, which is LLMs. So for example, some LLM, like a Mistral, more instruct model or a llama, there are many models. Model is a really, really large model, like 120 billion parameter and token. Token really the model uh, split into your user input. So whenever you have the Gen AI feature, it really communicate backend LLM server. So traditionally, previously, you probably have your own runtime to serve your application, like a Java, .NET, Python, JavaScript. You have your own runtime for Java, which is a JVM, or application server, like a Tomcat, or JVC EAP, IBM WebLogic, something like that. So how do you create a Gen AI and serve the, the Gen AI application? This is the, uh, the platform to serve your model as an LLM. And one of the interesting survey from Gartner, they also said every uh, most 80% enterprise company will be going into uh, Gen AI stuff uh, in a couple of years. So today I'm going to be uh, focusing on developers, application developers. Doesn't matter any kind of language you're going to use, but I'm going to end up with the Java application stuff. So Gen AI, so this is just some how to get started, adopt a new technology. You can say cognitive load, or I would say some like a journey or a path to get to AI journey, specifically Gen AI. So first thing is you're going to find your relevant LLM. Could be Mistral, could be LLM, Llama, or Mixtral, or Nomic, or Image Generation. And then you're going to try the prompt. So prompt, one of the terminology on AI, just like a user input. Just imagine that chat box, chat box, you can type in your user input. That is a prompt. But why we need to understand and learn prompt? People say prompt engineering because if you ask a simple and stupid question and you got a, like a very not good quality answers. So thing is you need to ask more smartly. So let me give you some example. Why so humid in Hong Kong right now? That is a very simple but not good question. Maybe you can ask uh, why uh, the weather is so humid in Hong Kong between August and September, specifically between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., even if uh, uh, today is not a uh, raining season. So you can uh, ask uh, specifically, or you can uh, expect an answer with some uh, example. OK, give me the reason with some two line of summary and the three bullet point for the more details, and last sentence should be a takeaway. And the LLM actually try to return based on your example. So this is all how to ask, how to answer, how to get the output from your language model with some practice. So that is a prompt engineering. So prompt engineering, someone actually defined prompt engineer or developer. Because the developer, in the end, implement that prompt engineering example in your application framework, Java, .NET, Python, or whatever you want. And once you find your right LLM, you need to try build application and refining the application. There are many technology how to make it better LLM experience in terms of accuracy, transparency, and performance. So if you ask some question, the same model over and over again, you got a probably similar answer, not exact same answer. Sometimes there are many different answer. So what if you answer, ask the different model, pretty much different answer. So how to make it better, how to make it more accurate answer for that, that's why people tune the model, say fine tuning, alignment tuning, retraining, or pre-training. However, some people, we don't have any resources to train a model. So train a model not just run some application. It, you need to use resources like a GPU processor, the big machine. 
And then it takes uh, maybe a couple hours to train a model based on your specific knowledge and specific domain uh, skill set. Pretty much data science job previously, but there are many tools uh, allows to train a model even if you don't have any data science capabilities. Anyway, so without so uh, with some resources and limitation for train a model, but there's another way to make it better, uh, responsible for a model, which is a rag, the retrieval augmented generation. You have a bunch of the special document, for example, PDF file, uh, like a CSV file or a text file. You can actually automatically that document ingest to your application, and then the document actually store in a vector store, like a cache or a Postgres care or some of the store, and the application only looking at the vector store. So whenever application try to ask some question, and then try to find the similar uh, content in document based on that question, and automatically attach a detail into that question in the end, the LLM perspective, LLM uh, got more specific question. I'm going to ask why Hong Kong is hot today, and then my ingesting documents, some forecasting information around, um, like between August and September, and then my application automatically searching and index. Oh, this is just some forecasting information, like uh, last year between August and September, and then there's some specific, like uh, some raining or some of the forecasting information, and put into my simple question, add that information, and sending to LLM, and LLM, oh, you're going to ask this weather question with this example. I, I'm happy to answer better uh, quality uh, content and generate it. So that is uh, something, and the last thing is that you're going to actually deploy app with the LLM using like a fantastic CI CD or something else. So this is a whole journey for developer how to get started and how to be there. So problem is to a lot of developer a little bit misread and understand, oh, so should I learn something new around like a Python and data scientist stuff? Because whenever looking at uh, LLM and Gen AI, pretty much a Python application, an example, and some of the processing pattern practices from data scientist perspective. So a lot of people forgive, okay, this is my nothing. But the problem is one day at some point in the future, your CTO, hey, Dan, you need to develop new Gen AI application, but not brand new one. We already have a fantastic business application. We just add one just feature based on Gen AI. But I'm a Java developer. I have zero experience of Python and Jupyter Notebook and so on. And how do I do that? Should I find a new job? Even if I go to a new company, they also ask the same thing. Hey, we need to add some Gen AI feature again. And then, oh. So, but the problem is, and the interesting part is here, so new Gen AI provide a lot of some API and common rivalry platform for developer, which he, not require the data science skill, like AI, ML, expert stuff. But one challenge for developer when they run AI, LM, LLM stuff, so they easily just access the public uh, AI platform like uh, Olama or OpenAI or Microsoft, Mistral, and Google stuff. Because you just need to RESP API URL and then a relevant um, credential, like a API access to cookie, something like that. But whenever you call that, you need to pay for that. The, here is a problem. So traditional application development, you just ask a call, but you obviously know how many calls are needed to invoke that RESP API from customer service or provider. Because I know how workflow goes on and how my application communicate with the external services. But in the Gen AI, for example, chat box, you can keep asking similar question over and over again until you get the right answer. It could be 10 times, it could be 20 times, it could be three times, which means you cannot measure, you cannot expect how many times I need to call the RESTful API for LLM to get right answer and finish my application services. 
So you want to keep doing trial and error, like a practice, and you will spend a lot of money. So that's why many enterprise companies bring their own LLM into their on-prem, like a cloud, on-prem cluster, something like that. So whenever I talk about this kind of some background story, and then many Java developers say, oh, OK, that's cool, but how do I get started? Because you say most, most example is the Python and Jupyter Notebook. So the Red Hat, we invented a new Java framework, Quarkus, and we donated to non-commercial foundation, which is a common house. Common house is something like a up Apache Foundation or Linux Foundation. So it maintained many Java projects, only Java projects, like a Hibernate, like a JRelicer, and JBank, and among others. So we donated our open source project to more non-commercial foundation, which he, uh, let Quarkus more vendor neutral. Anyone can use it just like a, some project from like a Tomcat from Apache Foundation. In the link chain, originally some common rivalry between Python application and any LLMs. So you don't need to add a Python developer. You don't want to develop the uh, LLM application, AI application with a low uh, networking program, something like that. Everybody just want to use some simple SDK or API or wrapping rivalry, make it easier to develop life. So Java developer really get used to do the same thing. Many Java framework, Java rivalry ecosystem make that happen. So they need to do the same experience for AI application. So Rank Chain 4J, so new open source project gives some common rivalry between Java application and LLMs. So developer standpoint, I just have a few API URL and RESTful API key and access token, and then I can call that. And then hold the transmission message based on JSON. It's pretty much simple. So here's a quick illustration how Quarkus works for AI apps. You can easily set some annotation, make a your Java class as AI services. Because, okay, I know um, LLM, how do I connect? And how to make a, uh, define my application, for example, when I create some database transaction, I know what I need to do. Like create like a DAO, DTO, or Java Beans, mapping my database schema as like a Java object, something like that. That's the known path and then practice how to do that. So what about the LLM? So LLM, how do I map my Java object with the LLM uh, response or output? That's the problem. So Quarkus actually wrapping up the rank chain 4J and it gives some pretty much easier, just like a normal Pojo Java app, how to use it. Let me go with that thing. And also Quarkus uh, allows to add like a rack uh, capability with that stuff. So the starting point as a Red Java developer, I need to add the relevant dependency, for example, Maven project or a graduate project, you can add a module. So, for, so Quarkus, Rankchain 4J, OpenAI, because Rankchain 4J beats on OpenAI API. So whatever you choose, any LLM, uh, which expose OpenAI API specification, you can use it from Quarkus application. Not only OpenAI, and this is a whole relevant model, like uh, uh, chat, uh, GPT-35, for Mistral, and the hugging face, and Olama, and then any kind of stuff. So here's a cool snippet, very simple example. So you can see that the register AI services, they one annotation, make your class now AI application, like a Gen AI. Okay, so my boss and my CTO uh, give me the job, mission, hey, you need to create a new Gen AI app with the Java, how to get started. The starting point, I put in the one Java uh, interface, interface and I put in the, this annotation. And now this is a Gen AI app right now. And also, you can say uh, which tools you're going to invoke. So tools means, so when you create a Gen AI application, pretty much you communicate your LLMs. But that's not the end. When you 
create your business application. Business application always are very complex. So, not, so for example, you can connect to database and then you can uh, send in query and then get some data set. Not the end. Once you got the data set, you may be rendering UI, or you can sending back, processing that data set, and then sending back to your messaging broker, or generate email content, and sending out the email server, or backend like a distributed server, caching server. So there are many workflow steps when you create a business application. So data transaction, one of the status, and the model communication should be same. So how do I set up some workflow between model communication? Once I get the right answer from model, and the, what is the next step? Like I'm, I'm gonna add, okay, so I'm very bad writer, but I need to generate email content and subject. So I'm gonna ask some simple, hey, Mr. Daniel, you are lucky, we gotta have a new product for you. That's I can say. But this is not business professional email. And I'm just creating new Gen AI and then just write in that kind of stuff and ask instruct model rather than chain model. And then that gave me super awesome generation, like a three paragraph to super professional business made content. And I just uh, created that, con just using that content, generating static HTML and the CSS, and then rendering HTTP, HTTP server, but also sending back to SMTP server, like an email server. So there is some step. Once I got the output from LLM, how do I do that? That's the tools. So tools could be external, any external service before, after you communicate with the LLMs. So pretty much easier how to get multiple tools. And then here's the interesting annotation too, systems message and user message. So system message is just defined, specified by your LLM, like a, like a behavior and attitude. Here is a, you are a professional poet, or you are a professional doctor, or you can say, oh, you are super angry, meaning, six years girl, just like uh, my daughter, something like that. And then you can set that, like a six years angry, always angry, meaning girl. And then, sorry about this, not a gender issue. So when you ask some question, the LLM answer just like a six years girl with a meaning, angry uh, attitude. So this is a how to set, because maybe you probably heard about that there are some setting on LLM, like a temperature, like a, uh, accuracy versus uh, uh, creative. So I want to more get creative answer rather than accuracy. For example, chat model. Chat model, the AI should be human being more the creative content, creative words, like a teenager or a professional assistant, rather than uh, like a, some reading a book. So that's why you're gonna give some more set of temperature, more creative side. But sometimes I need to more some exact number, or more actual information, factual stuff. That's why you're gonna print the more uh, temperature to accuracy. So this is all behavior. The user message is a really prompt. When you print uh, key in or uh, add in automatically your user input, it will sending out to this part, sending out to LLM. So I mentioned earlier, develop a new job, implement prompt engineering. So this is just way, how do you implement prompt engineering in your Java application using one single, two simple annotations. So let's get into the demo today. So I have already uh, created my uh, Quarkus application. So this is uh, my Quarkus app. Uh, so Last night, actually, we upgrade uh, Quarkus version. Quarkus actually may, mainly upgrade the minor version every two weeks, most likely. So currently, 3.13.3 is a race one, but not much is, uh, different uh, from my demo perspective. 
And here uh, I have a uh, uh, rank chain for J bomb, which is uh, make, I have a rank chain for open J. But in case I want to uh, access a uh, Olama, that's why I have Olama and a Jackson, which allows me parse consume JSON format to communicate at RM. And then also Quarkus allows you web socket. Uh, rather than HTTP, you can actually use both. So WebSocket is a pretty much a, uh, a synchronized communication between client and server. So HTTP protocol, which is traditional and awesome, but you have like a like a handshake, three-way uh, networking method, which is you're going to request, you need to uh, re waiting for response. It takes some time. But the WebSocket, you don't need to waiting for. And then some, of course, some database connection and store the data. That's it, pretty simple. And then when I go to source directory, I have an AI service, two AI, so one is claim. It's uh, just uh, like a chat box stuff. So one of the interesting, you can actually set up the model name here. So you, can use, so you, you don't need to use just one single model. Just like uh, you maybe have a multiple model to use that be, be, uh, based on your purpose. Uh, if you go to Hugging Face today, there are more than 850,000 models. Going to be soon 1 million. So how to select right model? There are many models, embedded model, trained model, untrained model, quantized model, unquantized model, and instruct model, chain model, image recognition model, generation model, and co-generation model. So many different models. So that's why your application should be used multiple models. So that's why easily I can set it this model, and here the system message, and the generation, uh, user input, uh, so automatically binding. Email is using instruct model. So chat model is a more creative model, like a human being conversation. Instruct model generate content just like a manual or document. So this is an email uh, generate uh, model. I just create that. And the other uh, Java source code pretty much uh, it's a normal thing, like uh, some Java, like a beans, and then automatically binding some stuff. And then resources is uh, like a spring controller, just uh, parsing and uh, processing the endpoint URL, pretty much obvious, and then uh, traditional Java application. So here's the interesting part, application property. And then here's a few things I need to do that. So rank chain 4J, uh, the model temperature, so zero means accuracy, and then one means more like a creativity way. I just go to like a between some air. And the model name, uh, Peroso Chat, I already trained this model based on mixture 7B uh, for more chat stuff. And then this is my uh, endpoint URL, and this is another model for instruct. So I already deployed, I'm not using Hugging Face or Olama today because uh, sometimes the network issue. I already deployed model to Red Hat uh, OpenShift AI, which is allowed me to access uh, AI model. So when every model deployed the uh, Red Hat OpenShift AI or some any VLLM stuff, you can actually have a RESTful API based on Swagger UI. This is a starting point for app developer. Okay, what is the API I need to access? So this is all you got, and then you can actually try out here, from here, just like, a, just like a, some any other RESTful API services and specification. Pretty much easier. And then this is a quick, simple Red Hat approach to AI stuff. So I already deployed like a five model and actually six model. And then one is the Mistral model and the Llama model and then another like a Molonai model and then like a chat model, embedded model and also instruct model. Only a five show and then I spread out and I can see seven differently. So I already uh, deployed model and then so let me go back to uh, terminal, and then I'm going to try to op, uh, run Quark stem mode. This is only that, my local machine. I'm not going to deploy this app to remote Kubernetes today. 
So I'm just trying to run my app. And one of the interesting part is when I go back to my project, and then there are web UI directory, which is a literally a React application, like a JavaScript, like a Node. So sometimes in reality, in architecture, you're going to make a separate front end based on React and the back end uh, based on like a Java, .NET, Python, whatever you want. But sometimes you just package it one time, uh, provide a simple application, but that simple application uh, represent uh, front, a front end AI, a UI as well. So for front end UI, pretty much JavaScript. So, but in case you don't have any JavaScript experience, you can just uh, put it into this directory and the Quarkus automatically wrapping up and install relevant node JS package and just running on JVM automatically. So I think so I'm now got half. And then the, uh, Quarkus actually provided a dev UI. So one of the good thing is it provides a chat by default. So with the chat, uh, sometimes, okay, I need to just a quick sanity check between my app and the added app before I testing my application itself. So this is a, a system manage default, and I can say any question why is so humid in Hong Kong. I don't know, so this is to ask my LLM, maybe good answer, but you guys judge that as long as you in local, <laughs> way better than me. And then here's the, uh, when I go back to my app and I actually got all low, here's my question, why so humid in Hong Kong today? And then there's uh, uh, some return code, and I go back to here, like Hong Kong, high humidity primarily due to the you know, geographical location and tropical, uh, some climate, things like that. Pretty, it's reasonable, and then, but I don't see why today is so humid, but it's a more general answer because of uh, geographical and then some more uh, general stuff. If I get more specific question, that's why I need to more ask more smart and specific way. Okay, so, and then go back to terminal, and then one is the, this is my real application. And the real application, this is a fake uh, insurance company. I put it on my, uh, car instance of my car is totally uh, damaged and wrecked. And then here's my Gen I feature chat AI. And then I have no idea uh, can my policy actually uh, cover this claim? So, the reason why I trained this model, and then it was not good answer for me based on my uh, insurance document. So I put in the insurance document and retrain and then you give some more like a, some insurance number, something like that. I can also go to another JNI feature like a, a email. Uh, hey Daniel, we have a good uh, product for you. And I just search that, I just submit that. And it automatically called to my instructor model. And now we got, oh, Daniel, we will give you a requirement pretty much in more business and professional way rather than that kind of stuff. So two things is that automatically generate new content for me using Gen.ai. And the Quarkus side, as you can see, is pretty much simple rather than some learning curve and then understand uh, new LLM specification or data scientisting, any others. So we are running on time. So I'm going to real quick uh, some stuff. So a lot of people are wondering, so some new terminology, agentic AI application. Agentic application is really you can put together all AI capability into your application. I mentioned earlier prompt engineering and then tools and agent and then sometimes a rack and then like a Quarkus actually uh, support this kind of store for your uh, save your document like a PDF or a text file, memory cache or a Postgre vector store or even in memory uh, 
reacting as well. Also provide observability, because whenever you create a new microservice, you need to put on the metrics, tracing, or logs in case you want to troubleshoot. Sometimes you got to add an exception in production. That's we're going to do the same thing, even AI application. And then, of course, the for tolerance, some of the enable, disable, some of the integration. So one last thing is, as developer standpoint, AI model is just new endpoint and back end service, just like a messaging broker or database. So thing is, it's one of my external service I need to connect and get some data from them. How do I do that rather than uh, creating new application or creating new API? Going to do similar way. Quarkus actually try to do to provide the same experience. I put on so many uh, technical demo video on my YouTube channel, including this one. So you can actually uh, feel free to visit it and then watch that and then ask me, hey, Dan, I need to run something around new Gen AI or some other stuff. And then feel free to subscribe and ask me anything around technology. It will give me more inspiration how to create, how to help community uh, developer and technical people and so on. So that's it. I'm going to stick around a little bit more in the right behind here. And then thanks for joining today. Hope you enjoyed this demo and presentation. And then have a good rest of this conference at all. Thank you.